listening to Brisbane Live with Ben Davis on 4BC. All right, I want you to come with me here as I take a few minutes out to escape from reality, escape to a place... Well, like Muhammad Ali, where we dare to dream, we aspire to. A place that is probably really only limited to those who win gold lotto. Mm, I know, I talk about dreaming. The world of the rich and famous, and someone who knows exactly what it takes to live in that world and meet the the exhausting standards of the wealthy, the famous, the influential, is my next guest. He's 37 years of age. His name is Grant Harold. You go, right. Well, he's known as the Royal Butler. Having spent more than a decade working for the Queen, Prince William and Kate, Prince Harry, Prince Charles, and today he runs the School of Etiquette and the Royal School of Butlers. Goodness me, I had no idea there was even a place existed. Grant, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ben. Um, mate, welcome to Australia for a start. Um, h- how does one become a Royal Butler? <laughs> uh, with a lot of determination. Um, I, I had an ambition when I was quite young to to become a royal butler, or apparently, according to my parents, to marry into the royal family. <laughs> um, I've always had a, a, I've always admired the royal family, and, and from a, a, a young age, I was always asking my parents about the way you could achieve this. And eventually, I, I got the courage to write to the Queen. And it was interesting because recently I found the two original letters that, uh, or the two responses I had back from the, the Queen or from her lady in waiting. And it, it was very much me just, <laughs> you know, a young, a young chap trying to, trying to see if there'd be any possibility of one day getting to work for the family. So, so th- I mean, that's the thing. I'm just, they wouldn't advertise for a job like this, no. would they? Well, they do. I mean, these days they, they, they do. But back then, it, it was, it, you, you didn't really hear of the kind of positions because a lot of the, the staff that normally go into those roles, they, they, the, the, the reality is they'll stay in the role until the day they, they they die or until they can't work anymore. And I was very lucky that I had that kind of ambition. I, I never gave up on it. And it was um, a few years, well, quite a few years later that it, it turned into reality when I heard that the prince was looking for a butler and I applied to Clarence House, as you as you do. And it took about six months, which is why I say determination, because it was about six months of, of interviews and up and down to London to meet with different um, members of the household. And eventually, on my final interview, I actually met with the, the prince and got to sit down and, and to chat to him and, and, thankfully, to convince him to take me on. Well, <laughs> you must have had the gift of the gab. What else do you need to have as the, <laughs> uh, to, be, to be the royal butler? What attributes do you need? Uh, I think the most important thing is, is, is the most obvious, discretion, loyalty, uh, and trust. You know, they, they've got to know that they can trust you uh, in the home with their possessions, around the family, and, and know that that loyalty will stay until the day you die. And, and even though, you know, today I, I'm very fortunate that I do give interviews and things, but there's obviously things that I, I never disclose, yep. and that's something that they know. I think to be a... a well, hang on, well, there goes a whole page of questions in, so <laughs> thank you. No. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, within reason. I mean, I, I'm, I, whenever I give interviews and things, I talk about the personal side because I was very mm. fortunate as well to work for them. I spent a lot of time, a lot of my role was with them as uh, as myself when I wasn't actually working for them. I got invited to different parties and balls and, you know, went riding in the Bamaro estate. So I got to know them um, from a personal point of view as well as a working point of view. Well, there you go. You've answered one question I was going to ask. What what happens on, on your downtime? Is there any downtime? Mm. Do, you, do you sit around with other butlers or do you actually become part of the, the, the family as such? You, you do think, I mean, it, it, it amazed me because you, you do obviously, the, the downtime, you can all go and you kind of sit down and, and <laughs> chat and have tea. <laughs> or like myself, I used to go out and do things. You know, I'd go out, uh, especially if I was in Scotland in the Bemoral Estate, I'd yeah. go out running and you'd bump into members of the family. I'd go, um, I'd go horse, uh, uh, horse riding. Uh, I actually went horse riding on the actual Bemoral Estate by the castle and that was my very first um, encounter with the Queen where oh, wow. I was uh, we, we were coming down towards the morrow and the horse I was on started kind of um, getting a bit distressed and it was kind of walking backwards and I was getting quite worried thinking I was going to get thrown off and I, I, I could see something in amongst the feet but I couldn't work out what it was and eventually I discovered it was a corgi um, as I was kind of, you know, making a few comments to whatever it was. And then I, when I saw it was a corgi, I, I had this moment where I thought, oh, Lord, um, 
the, she, the Queen's going to be nearby. And sure enough, there she was with head scarf and all, just standing to the side. And, you know, very quickly composed myself and wished her, uh, it was an afternoon, so I wished her good afternoon. Uh, and she kind of smiled and off we went. And that was my first encounter with the Queen. I'm sure there've been plenty more since then. Can I? There was. There was. <laughs> can Can I play a, a a very quick word association game with you? Is would that be okay? Of if, course. If, okay, brilliant. I am speaking to Grant Harold. He is the royal butler. Well, that's his title anyway. Has worked with well the royal family. Grant, if I say the Queen, what's the first word mm. that pops into your mind? Wonderful. <laughs> um, Prince Philip. Uh, funny. Okay, um, Prince Charles. Uh, again, wonderful. I know <laughs> it was it's too it's long a pause it's there, Grant. Sticky. <laughs> Grant, it was too big a pause there. Okay, what about William and Kate? Uh, again, fun, great fun. Really? Mm. Can you elaborate? Yeah. <laughs> Well, the younger the the younger royals for me they the were my my age group yeah. and they were just they were just uh, I got on very well with them because of the age um, the age thing and with Harry William and Kate obviously I spent quite a bit of time around them and felt very lucky to kind of get to to again know them uh, from a personal point of view you know I'd go to the local pub and you'd often they would be sitting at the table next to me and the very first time that happened I remember thinking this is this is unusual but then it it was the norm that was that was kind of how how it how it was and they very much made me feel very much part of that kind of household and they made Grant did you just say you went to the pub with Prince mm. yeah right of course as you do <laughs> doesn't Shh. everyone no of course. <laughs> well that leads me to my last one Harry Again, um, fun. <laughs> uh, he, he's fun. He's got a great sense of humour. We all know he's got a great sense of humour. And again, one of my first meetings with him, again in a pub, was uh, sitting at a pub. This water, this balloon went past with some water in it. Landed just beside where I, where I was. But I quickly pointed out we were outside. And uh, the next thing, uh, this chap came over and he was like, I'm so sorry, uh, you know, it didn't mean to come over your way. And, and I turned around and it was, it was Harry and I could he recognised me. And, you know, and I thought, yeah, this, this guy's really... He's really, he's good. Oh, that's nice well, that that's good, mate. You're out here in Australia. Um, you spent some time with a, a family in Sydney over the weekend. What, passing on some of the the tricks and the traits, or did you actually? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I was, I, I'm quite lucky. Stays. Uh, obviously, the holiday rental uh, home company got me to to come out because they ran a competition competition uh, because of the Queen's 90th birthday, and one lucky family for one day got to stay in the most amazing um, mansion, mm. and I was brought in to give a, a royal masterclass. Really? All right. Be, times against us. I've got about thirty seconds. But Graham, what is the biggest faux pas we make as far as etiquette or or, or just uh, manners, graces? What's the biggest faux pas we make that we should correct ourselves on? Mobile phones. Really? Simple. Mobile phones. Unfortunately, we it's the 21st century. We all need them. We all use them. But sometimes we kind of forget, and especially when you're dining, it's, it's awful when people seem to focus more on the mobile phones than the company around them. So I'm always going on to people that I understand the part of today's world. We all, I use them. We all use them. But it's just kind of using them at the right times. And when you don't need them to use them, switch them off or put them in silent, put them in the pocket. Well, there we go. You have been told by the Royal Butler himself. Grant, appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of uh, your trip out Thank here you. to Australia. Grant Harrell there, Royal Butler. There we go. It's probably the closest brush to royalty that uh, uh, I will have. And I'm glad we escaped from reality just for a little bit there.